Hello and welcome to Current Affairs on JTV. Today we have a special BDS uh, programme for you where we are going to be looking at the issue of the boycott, uh, divestment and sanctions campaign against Israel with two expert speakers. Firstly, Ronnie Barkan, who is a BDS activist and a co-founder of Boycott From Within, a group in Israel. And secondly, Chen Mazig, who is a writer and activist, but also served for five years as a humanitarian officer uh, in the IDF in the West Bank. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Now, Ronnie, as you are essentially the case for the prosecution today, I'll start with you. Why do you believe in BDS? Because it's a fairly, I think we'll all agree, it's a fairly draconian solution to a problem. What's the issue as far as you can see it? Uh, I would uh, regard BDS very differently. I think that BDS is a no-brainer. It is the very first step in order to, to end Israeli crimes, and we're talking about a long list of crimes under international law and so on, mainly uh, belligerent occupation, colonialism, and apartheid. And when we talk about apartheid, this is a very serious crime under international law. It is one of the few crimes, along with genocide, What's your that, is regarded, that is regarded as a crime against humanity. Okay, but so, you, you, so you've, 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 gone, you've said Israel, several things, so maybe go if into Israel, that. If Israel does practice apartheid, mm -hmm. then it means that the the global community is, ob is, is obligated to fight against this and to end that. And this is what BDS is about. It is simply about ending Israeli crimes and uh, insisting that it respects its obligations under international law. That is all. Now, you say apartheid. That's probably the, the strongest charge you've uh, laid there. Why do you think Israel actually practices apartheid? So what does were, that mean to you? Yeah, you were about to ask if I'm a legal scholar yeah. or anything like that, so I came prepared. Um, Basically, there is a, a very well-written uh, UN report. Uh, your audience may be familiar with that. I'm sure you are. Uh, could you just uh, read it out? That's the title. Yes, the title is uh, Israeli Practices Towards the Palestinian People and the Question of Apartheid. And um, I could already read from the executive summary if you're interested. Or maybe you would like to post uh, the link. I will, uh, I will post uh, some links uh, for the audience. So uh, you know, if they would like to go to bit.ly slash JTV links, all undercase, uh, all lowercase, they are welcome to see some links there. Uh, and basically, the report concludes, or the executive summary concludes, uh, saying that uh, the weight of the evidence supports, beyond a reasonable doubt, the proposition that Israel is guilty of imposing an apartheid regime on the Palestinian people, which amounts to the commission of a crime against humanity, the prohibition of which is considered a uh, use cogens okay. uh, in international uh, customary law, but, and on and on. But let, let me just and come back on that. About what is it? What, what? Okay, there are lots of reports will it? say it lots is, of different things. Well I'm asking you personally. I'm asking you personally. It is a very well-defined crime under international law. This is the, the, the main issue. Um, some people would like to compare it to the previous case of apartheid in South Africa, and there are many similarities. Actually, uh, many of those who were fighting apartheid back then say that uh, the Israeli case of apartheid is far worse. Uh, I would argue that Israel is an apartheid state by design. Okay. Um, but can you just define this in one sentence. What is yes. it that makes it is, Israel an apartheid state? Yes, uh, according to the law, and according also to most people's understandings, uh, when there is a systemic um, racial or ethnic uh, supremacy over, of one group over another, which is done, as I said, uh, in a systemic way, uh, which is uh, basically meant to give privileges to a select group and to deny the basic rights of the others, that would fall under the definition of apartheid. Okay. Right, Chen, you've heard all of that. You've heard, you've heard the, uh, the issue of um, you know, why BDS is needed and also this idea that Israel is a systemic oppressor, I suspect, in, in terms of as an apartheid state. What is your riposte to that? Well, first of all, I, I, it was hard to hold myself. Um, several things. First of all, as Ronnie is trying to avoid the defin defining what apartheid is over and over again and referring to UN reports, the same UN that is saying that Palestinian women, beats the, Palestinian women are being beaten by their husbands because of Israel. That's, that's the same UN. The same UN that is being run by Saudi Arabia, that the Human Rights Council is being controlled by Arab countries that are oppressing women and LGBTQ and actually practicing apartheid throughout, throughout the Middle East. This is the UN that the report uh, is from. So we should take it into consideration. Well, I've already but, said, let's forget about the report. Right, right. Let's talk about your own but personal are, definitions. Right. And if we are talking about apartheid, about mm. racial segregation that is based on race, uh, um, it's, uh, I mean, the, 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 the notion that Israel would, would be able to even, uh, for me as, a, as a, someone that is, um, uh, my mom is from, uh, is from Iraq, so I guess um, Arab country, and my dad is from North Africa. He's part of the Berbers, um, the, 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 the most indigenous tribe to, to North Africa. Uh, I am Jewish. Um, so to go through this, uh, and, I mean, I, I can't, even, can't even comprehend how to, how to 
pick and choose who's, uh, who's an Arab and who is not and who is Jewish. Uh, we are 60% 60, 60 of Israeli Jews are actually Jews from the Middle East. So to, to say or to bring up the notion that there, there is a segregation based on race is just ridiculous. That's first. Um, second, um, if we are talking about, uh, um, uh, about I mean, the definition itself is a problem because if you are saying that Israel is an apartheid state, you're saying that Israel has no right to exist and it's a country that has no legitimacy. Um, and, that's, uh, and, that's, and that's terrible for someone to say that, especially given the fact that most of the, of the world, most of the countries and leaders around the world, from France to Germany, uh, with the Social Democratic uh, Party in Germany just passing, um, uh, con condemning BDS and, and calling it anti-Semitic, because it is anti-Semitic in its nature. The fact that people would focus on Israel, on the only Jewish state, um, while not perfect, I would be the first to say that Israel is not perfect, but um, we have a lot of things to work on. But in 70 years, being able to rebuild a country of indigenous people that return to their homeland um, and actually able to, uh, again, not perfect, but able to correct itself, and it is a democracy. Um, so to, to, to fight against only the Jewish state while ignoring um, human rights violations throughout the Middle East, while ignoring the fact that Palestinians are oppressing women, oppressing LGBTQ, when the Palestinian, the, uh, well, and all along, the head of the Palestinian Authority, the one that, uh, that Roni is speaking here for, no, uh, no, not no. officially, but, uh, but with the statements, he's basically um, channeling or, or repeating the statements that are coming from Palestinian officials. Um, he's just building himself a mansion in Ramallah for $12 million. So that the whole notion that, I mean, the, the fact that people like Roni are being used to propagate for Palestinians Palestinians and for um, oil countries like Saudi Arabia that has a lot of uh, interest in it, Qatar, um, other countries that are actually promoting this narrative because as long as the spotlight would be on Israel, uh, we can ignore the human rights violations. So, so to ignore it and to say Israel is the problem in the Middle East while 57 Arab Muslim countries are every day oppressing women, oppressing LGBTQ, oppressing minorities, enslaving black people, enslaving Asians in Qatar. Um, the fact that Palestinians use the word Abid as a slave, the, the word Abid, I mean, my family speaks Arabic, mm -hmm. I'm coming from an Arabic speaking okay. country. Fam just one second, um, uh, family. So, um, so there's a lot of things that he would like to, to ignore in his, op in his uh, focus on Israel, but that comes from an agenda. Okay. Um, are you in the pay of the Palestinians? Or are, is this, are you doing the work of the Palestinians in this? I'm doing the work of any decent human being, uh, uh, especially so uh, since I am among the privileged group in this very, uh, um, really uh, barbaric apartheid state. Uh, and since I'm among the privileged group, I, obviously that means that I carry more responsibility. Now, I wouldn't uh, touch on all of the talking points no. that Ken went through because that would take hours. Can uh, I ask but you to pretty much all of, them, all of them were false. Um, all of my points were yes, false. Yes, all your points were false, other than That's the factual data wide, that you gave that, that you are coming, uh, if, uh, your, your origin is from Arab countries and so on, that obviously I will not uh, argue with. Um, now, well, hold on, are you saying, for example, that Israel is not a democracy? Israel was never a democracy, not even to begin with. As, I said, before, as I said before, Israel was founded from, from the grounds up as an apartheid state. The, it, Israel was founded on the basis on, of ethnic cleansing. Just, okay. uh, Israel was, was founded on the basis of ethnic cleansing driving away the indigenous people from their home. Oh, a, over 700,000 people have been, over 700,000 people, indigenous people have been uh, expelled from their homes and to this day they are denied the right to come back home. And ever since there has been a legal uh, system that was put in place that neatly falls under the legal definition of the crime of apartheid, even before apartheid was defined under international law, only later, only 19 years later, came the brutal military occupation of the West Bank, Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem, also the Golan Heights, which is uh, under the Syrian Golan, which is under a different category. Uh, and, and all of these to this day carry on. There's a long list of crimes. Now, the BDS campaign uh, demands that Israel respects its obligations under international law, and there are exactly three demands there. Mm -hmm. One is ending of that harsh, brutal military occupation of 1967. Obviously, the people who live under that brutal occupation deserve to be free from that occupation. Secondly, uh, equality for those who are currently second-class citizens inside Israel. 20% of the population are not among the privileged group and therefore they are uh, discriminated against in every possible way, both by law and practice. In what way? In Just give an example. There's, uh, more than because there is a Supreme Court judge that is a, a Muslim. The Supreme is, Court is the, the, is, court uh, is the main vehicle there is, of apartheid. There, oh, okay. The Israeli Supreme Court so is the, the main Muslim vehicle Supreme of apartheid. Court judge, it has just the, the Israeli Muslim Supreme Court judge is part of the apartheid regime. Absolutely. And the Arab, and the Arab parties in the Knesset, in the Israeli parliament, are part of the... the world, those 
who collaborated with the regime. Now, sorry, are you, can I just understand, uh, you're saying I'll, that, I'll, I'll just are you saying the, the Supreme Court Justice who he's referring to as a is, collaborator? Sorry. I am saying that he is part and parcel of the of the criminal apartheid regime. Uh, and now, those parties, those and political par parties, no, please, please, please. and those political parties, the Arab political parties in the Knesset. I do not vote for the apartheid parliament, which is uh, the Knesset, uh, simply because uh, it carries no legitimacy. Okay, but are you saying uh, that anyone who the, does participate is therefore you, collaborating? You, you know with that the according system? to the law, uh, according to the election law, the Kne uh, basic law, of the Knesset, uh, a political par party cannot run for elections if it, uh, it denies Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. So any, basically any party that uh, demands the democratization of Israel and denies the inherent ethnic supremacy of the state, and this is also written here in the report, the very good report by two excellent mm -hmm. legal scholars, any party that denies uh, the ethnic supremacist character of the state cannot even run for elections. Now there is also an amendment to that law saying that not only the platform of that party uh, would deem it basically unelectable, but also any representative who expresses themselves even in writing or on over Facebook uh, denying Israel as an ethnic supremacist state, denying the legitimacy of an ethnic supremacist state, uh, will not be able to run for elections. So this is by law. Okay. okay. So, are, so, so if I so can distill your I argument, do not, I do not uh, participate in the elections in Israel. I understand because I do not see the legitimacy of that. But let me go to the okay. three main points Fine of the media's campaign. Third point, yes. Freedom from the military mm -hmm. occupation, equality for those who are currently second-class citizens. Okay, what yep. we call Palestine in, living in Palestine 48. And, third. and finally, and most importantly, the rights of the refugees, those who have been expelled uh, in 1948. Actually, they were expelled even before the foundation of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, one third of the population was expelled even before okay, very quickly, the state yeah. was founded. Uh, and uh, to this day, they are denied the right to come back home. So it is quite um, uh, Orwellian of you to discuss the rights of the indigenous people who came in and usurped the land and they drove away the indigenous people rather than uh, dealing with the rights of those who have been expelled from there. And why don't you just simply accept their right mm -hmm just like our right mm -hmm. to live there as equals. So we have a right to live there? Because according to you, we don't have a right to live no, there. I, no, no, no one uh, that I know that supports BDS uh, is in favor of another ethnic cleansing just in order to fix the previous one. That's far from it. it it's exactly the opposite. We are but you demanding do want the equality. Jews to be a minority we are demanding within, equality, freedom, right. and justice and you want it to for be all Palestine. the sons and daughters of the land. There are 18 million people who, who are occupied. regarded there are 18 million people right. uh, uh, who are regarded as, uh, who I would regard as the sons and daughters of the land, six million uh, Israelis, Israeli Jews as they are referred to, uh, and 12 million Palestinians, half of which are in forced exile for seven decades. Uh, so all of these people have the right to live in equality, freedom, and justice. Would you argue with that? I would argue with every single point that you made, seriously, you, because you are, if you're accusing me and saying in, in making false arguments, but you are doing, making false arguments. Let's start with, let's, let's start with ethnic cleansing. The ethnic cleansing that you keep on talking about and throwing out there. There's no ethnic cleansing. The fact that there are, <laughs> that there are Muslims living in Israel is just a fact to it. How many Jews live in the Middle East, by the way? How many Jews live in, live in Iraq, where my family was, was forced out of in 1951? How many Jews live, live in, in Tunisia, in Morocco, in Egypt? If you want to talk about ethnic cleansing, there was an ethnic cleansing in the Middle East and was an ethnic cleansing of Jews from Arab and Muslim countries and from, and from North Africa, like my family. So that's, that's the first point. Now, this is fact. You can't really argue with that. 850,000 people that lost everything. They have $30 billion in property, and I still don't have my justice. And by the way, people like you don't speak for do my these justice. People, do these people have rights? Those who have been expelled from Arab countries, do they have rights? For their property, uh, possibly if they would like to come back? Do they have rights? Can I come back to, can I go back to Iraq? Can Would I go back have, to Tunisia? Look, I carry Let's Europeans talk about the Ethiopian war that we were, look, right. This is how it works. I understand Please. because you are privileged and welcome, this is where it's coming from. I am not privileged and while you are, am, while you are a straight white male that is, uh, that is coming from very privileged background in Rwanda. You, you should stick to one talking point rather than uh, jumping between one to another. Okay, you know, there's what about ism and much. then there's I'm the pink washing and then there's the others. Oh, pink washing. Now, let's go, let's go back. Look, welcome to reality. I carry uh, a European passport these days simply right. because my dad was born in some Eastern European country. Mm -hmm. He left it when he was a baby. Right. He doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know anything about that country. I don't speak the language and I don't know anything about that country. And it was so easy for me to get that passport. Why is that? Because this is how things work. 
So you are arguing for my rights to get a passport in Iraq, in Tunisia, and in all other 57 Muslim Arab countries that that strip me out from my rights and my property and my land and killed my great grandfather? Are you are are you are you arguing for that? Because if you are, that's that's fine. Because then we can have this conversation. But you are focusing on Israel as the Jewish state. That's the only thing that bothers you. People have rights. Indigenous people. I agree. That's why Israel exists. Because it's the Jewish state. Land. It's the, Right. We were forced Israel from is, our land. I think and we came right. back Israel to our indigenous state, homeland. Israel is a Jewish state. You are conflating Zionism and Judaism. Zionism, just like Zionism this, is the just, movement just to like liberate this, the Jewish people. A, a television and for, station right, does. Right, okay. It is all about conflation of Zionism and Judaism. Now, <laughs> let's, let's separate the two things. Israel is a Zionist state. Is that right, you claim right. to be Jewish. Right. Okay. I claim to be Jewish. Yeah, there's nothing Jewish about I'm Israel sorry, other this, than the, one the, thing. The there's only one thing that makes Israel Jewish. There's a lot of, okay, unquote. guys, 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 there's a lot of claims flying yes, around here and counterclaims, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. I think we have, a, we have basic definitional so, issues. So, 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 basic so let, me, issues. let me just make that yes. point. Uh, there is only, there's one and only one thing that makes Israel a so called Jewish state, and that is that myself and probably also you uh, have Jewish nationality in our ID. My, Citizenship is Israeli, but I don't have an Israeli nationality because there's no such thing. Israel vehemently uh, denies uh, the concept of an Israeli nationality because that would mean that at least on the face of it, its citizens would have equal rights. So our nationality, according to the state, is Jewish. Our fellow citizens in Israel who are not among the privileged group, they would have other nationality like Arab or Circassian or Druze. Okay. Okay, Let, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Israel is an apartheid state by design and it segregates and, and differentiates already from birth. From birth, but, but people, people have on, two on, different Ronnie, Ronnie, legal, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. In it, England, let me birth, give you an example in Britain. Let me give you an example from, in Britain. From birth, people have two different, Ronnie. babies have two different legal paths that they walk through depending on, on whether their uh, parents are privileged Israeli Jews or simply Israeli citizens who are not among the privileged group. Is that correct? Is what he's just said about two legal routes, about, and what he said earlier about the 80-20 uh, divide between the percentages of populations. Is there discrimination against Israel's Arab minority in that context? Uh, if you, okay, there, if there is racism in the Israel society, in every society there is racism. If you're yes. looking at the United States, where was the U United States been. 70 years into? You know what, where is the United States now? Is there um, systematic discrimination? There is the no of what systematic says? discrimination. Quite the opposite. Actually, the fact that he's saying that uh, members of parliament, uh, Arab members of parliament, must obey the, the Jewish and uh, democratic ideal is false because there is because there is a member there is a member of parliament um, like Ahmed Tibi. There is a member of parliament actually uh, Hanin Zouabi that participated in terror actions against Israel, and she was a member of parliament and she stayed there throughout the time that there was investigation because they didn't investigate was she encouraging violence or actually using violence against Israeli soldiers. So, so the whole, the, the, whole, the whole ideas that he's trying to preach here are false. The fact that um, Arabs, Muslims uh, can, uh, can get to university um, faster than I can, uh, have uh, free access to it, they don't have to serve in the army because of their sensitivities. Uh, the fact that there's 20% Israeli Muslims living in Israel, Israeli Arabs, is, that, is just a proof to the fact that, that, what Ronnie, is, that Ronnie is lying. Um, but, but I understand him, he's lying because How he is paid for, because he has, uh, he has a, a lot of agenda to promote. He doesn't really believe in the things that he says because he knows that the facts are different. The fact that there's 1.6 million Arab Israelis, the fact that there's um, millions of, Israel, of Palestinians still living in the West Bank and, uh, and in the Gaza Strip, uh, it just shows that, he, that, he's right, that he's wrong. The only people that oppress the Palestinians today in the Middle East are the Arab countries, are, is Lebanon where there's, uh, Palestinians have different rights um, from, from real Leban Lebanese um, based on their, on their, of their, on their ethnicity. Um, the fact that the, my family was ethnic cleansed, but he would never speak about that because that's, that's really hurting his narrative. The fact that the Arab League is the one no, that I makes the that calls. Rights, right, just, just a second. Like the, way, the fact that the, okay. the Arab League is the one that is making the calls for the Palestinians, the fact that Palestinians can generationally pass their refugeesness, and the fact that they are still being held in refugee camps throughout the Middle East by their Arab brothers and sisters, that 57 Arab countries, that, uh, Arab Muslim countries that are still controlling them as political weapon with the help of the UN, with the help of oil, oil states that are, that are promoting this. Um, while Israel observed the, the refugees from the Middle East, my family, uh, uh, included 850,000 Arab, uh, 850,000 Jews that came from Arab and Muslim countries uh, that were observed and became uh, citizens of the country. And I'm not a refugee. My kids will not be refugees because we, we've continued that Israel kept on trying to, uh, to solve this issue. Meanwhile, he's preaching to, to maintain this issue. He wants to, he brings out solutions that are unrealistic. The, idea, the whole idea is that you're preaching, you're telling me to come back to reality, but you need to come back to reality because the world that you are living in is not, a, is not the word okay. that... A final I'm, word from the two of you, yes. Ronnie. Do you think that a group of people uh, has the right to live at the expense of another group of people? Yes of or no? Of course not. 
No. Of course not. Of course. So you should obviously be supporting uh, the end of Israeli apartheid and the respect of all the right of the rights of all the people of that land. It's as simple as that. It's, uh, but it's ridiculous. You, do you listen to what you're saying? Of course. You you sound mad. You really you sound insane because your mm -hmm. statement. And by the because, way, that's why because that's why I'm referring saying. to everything that's written here in the uh, very well in, written in, uh, report. In the UN report, it was by criticized the way, by the UN itself I'm happy and, that by, you mentioned that, and by uh, UN Secretary General himself criticizing this report. I'm happy, I'm Leaders throughout the world, that. right? Okay. Yeah, I'm very happy to mention that because this is not the first report about Israeli apartheid. Before that, there was the HSRC report and the David Bondier report and other uh, very mm -hmm. well written legal. Uh, uh, reports dealing with the legal case of Israeli apartheid. And I mention again that this okay. is a very serious crime under international Gentlemen. law. And do you think that you, we should have been boycotting South Africa back in the day of apartheid then? And do you think, and if so, why do you, don't you support the boycott of Israel? Your today? final word, Hen, on this, because Ronnie's made his point. Right. There. If you Can ask, you, yes. If you ask uh, Reverend Kenneth Mishwed, a fight against apartheid, he will tell he will tell you that he's insulted by the fact that people compare South Africa apartheid to Israel. He's been to Israel. Many leaders from South Africa that fought against apartheid been to Israel and saw the situation as it is. Uh, to say that is wrong right. again, but final you are, you your That's it. Good, gentlemen. Just Ronnie, just Ronnie, 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 one last thing. One, two, two. one last thing that I want to say. Okay. We don't want to get involved in a in bringing other people's. They're not. Here. None of these mm -hmm. people are here. Right. You two are here. Just Fine, one word. very last sentence. Just very last sentence. I think that um, that Ronnie needs to have a reality check. And people like him, I don't. I'm not angry with him. I understand where where he's coming from. That he is being pushed to to push this false agenda. Um, but but. The, is all, I mean, I came here to have a, a serious discussion. There's no serious discussion with people that are lying, and, and everything you said is a lie. If I had more okay. time, I would counter Gentlemen, each and every case that you made. Thank you. We've run out of time. Thank you. Thank you, both of you, for making Thanks your points. Thank you all at home. We'll see you again soon for another episode of Current Affairs on JTV.